Welcome and thank you for coming out and tuning in to House of Reawakening Minds as we strive to be a holistic center for spiritual grounding, free thought, self-discovery, and more science, an awakening experience for all ages. Please note that the views, opinions, and services expressed are offered by guest lecturers or those of the lecturers and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of House of Reawakening Minds. This evening we have no other than our brother, Abdullah L. Talib Mosley Bay, who will be giving a lecture this evening on the Coptic Cross. But before we get started, we have a special thanks. Um, as we have our many viewers throughout the Amexum who um, tune in as well as contribute to House of Real Waking Minds, we have someone whom were so gracious to donate markers. They felt that we needed additional markers, and we did, but thank you. Um, in their note read, we see some, when you see someone doing good, help them do more good. Just a donation for the house, peace and love, Dr. Naira. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're gonna move forward, Brother Abdullah Bay. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. 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 Assalamu they greet us each other by saying Happy Holy Day. And I wanted to elevate people's minds as to why we're saying Happy Holy Day. I often hear people, you know, just parrot things so that we can move out of parroting and get into a connection of what it is. So Happy Holy Day, Morris. My question for you. How is the five-pointed star in the Moorish flag connected to the Holy Day? That's the question to the viewers, those who are here. How is the five-pointed star in the Moorish flag connected to the Holy Day? Hmm. Give yourself a few minutes to think about it. One minute. Do we have anybody online that got a response? How is a five-point star? Maybe we haven't thought about this before. Now we know thought about what this what this means and the origin of this star. What does it mean? What's the, what's, everything has an origin. Creation. All right, creation. Sam says creation. Anyone else? Fertility. Fertility. star relates to, right? Now, how is it connected to the Holy Day? You have to show, you have to, yeah, show me the connection to the Holy Day. Happy, morning, happy Holy Day, Morris. Happy Holy Day. So how, well, how is it connected to the Holy Day? Who's on the board? One, two, three. Day what? Friday, right? All right. So this is how this is what this is where etymology comes in. This is where etymology comes in, and I give this to you four weeks ago. For those who are listening, you listen. If you saw my saw the class four weeks ago, you know this. 
Rose Venus Bay said the energy, the female energy. Oh, the female energy. Is that how it's connected to the five point star and the holy day are connected? The, the, it, it, they both connect, represent the female energy? Yes. Yaku El Copper Metal. Copper Metal, yes. Venus Day. Venus, there you go. All these are correct. Fertility is correct. Creation is correct. All right. Now, first we want to say Venus. All right. We want to say Venus because all these, so everyone, everyone's correct. So we want to say Venus because it's the planet Venus that is a symbol of fertility. We're going to explain why. I actually explained why four, four weeks ago. So this is Freya and Old Norse. The planet Venus is Freya and Old Norse. So Freya, Freya. And it's the planet Venus. So why, how does it connect so happy hope that five point star is the planet Venus? Absolutely. And we know that the etymology of the word Friday is day of Venus or day of Freya. Freya day. Freya day. All right? And Latin is Viernes Diaz, day of Venus. But this is the name for Venus in Old Norse. So Friday, Happy Holy Day, is the day of Venus. And the word holy, we're gonna get into what constitutes a holiday. In Greek, it's Helios. In Latin, it's Sol. So the A, A, H, and S transliterates. In Greek, it's Helios. In Latin, it's Sol. Word Hell and Holy are all in the same family. So the Holy Bible is the Sun Book. Holy Bible, Bibliotech. Bibliotech. So when you say the word Holy Bible, you're saying that's translated. Sun Book. Sun Book. So let's go into this five pointed star. What does this five point? Why is it five points? Why, what's the origin of the five points? Is it somebody just arbitrarily decided to draw a pentagram? They were bored one day. You know, they took out a piece of paper, pen, or papyrus, or they just decided to draw it in the sand or carve it out because they were bored. I ain't got nothing else to do, so let me just. I'm going to carve this out. What's that? What's the origin of five points? Why five points? Five points, of, five points of fellowship. Five points of fellowship. Why five principles? Why not ten? A hundred? Six hundred? Why five? Why not eight? Well, I'm, I'm doing this. This is to get you to think. So I'm posing these questions. I, I, that's, this is my style. My style is not to come up here and just all right. To start off, just get people to think. There's things that I know. I'm, I'm opposing a question that I. Some people I can't because I can't assume that everybody doesn't know. I'm not going to assume that. Okay? I'm not going to assume that people do not know this. I have taught on this. Block talk radio show, they might have listened to me in the block talk show. So I don't, you know, so I can't assume that people don't know this. 
All right? I mean, a lot of people do not know it. All right? But there are people who do know this. All right? So five points. You don't know. All right, so let's so let's get down to the five points. So we do know it's connected. We do know it symbolizes Venus, right? So you already, that's, see, that's the beginning point now, that you know that it symbolizes Venus. So what about Venus? How does the five points relate to Venus? The Venus cycle. Well, it's the morning star. All right. The brightest star. All right, so you have the, the, cycles, the cycles of Venus. You have the cycles of Venus. And the five pentagram. So there's what? There's five cycles of Venus in eight years that form this five pointed star. One cycle, two cycles, three cycles, four cycles, five cycles. Let me give you the cycles. 263 days. All right? Where's the evening star? I mean, morning star. Morning star. Eight days. Eight days. Where it can't be seen. It's behind the near point of the sun. Can't be seen for eight days. 260 days, 263 days is the evening star. So that's one, two, three, four, and 50 days where it's the far point of the, behind the sun from the far point and it can't be seen. That's what? 584 days. So here we go. That's one cycle. This is one cycle. This whole, this 584 days is one cycle. That's one point. All right, one point. So we have here 263 days. Evening star. Eight days where it can't be seen. It's 263 days, is it? 263 days is the morning star. Eight days it can't be seen. 263 days is the evening star. All right? 50 days it can't be seen. Then we're going to do it again. That's all the cycle over again. Five of these. In eight years, eight years, it takes eight years to complete this five, this five cycles. So this is not, this is not arbitrary. Laws of nature, then nature's God. So these various patterns that you see, yes. Islam. Um, so are you saying that the 584 day, the 584 days is actually a cycle of, of the fifth of the of the cycle because you've given 263A, 50. So then the completion makes the fifth itself, or is there another? The complete. I'm sure you're confident. Are you saying? When you say five. Cycles. Cycles. This is one cycle. So, oh, this, so it's not five cycle. things in a cycle. No, it's five cycles of four. Right. This is this is. Gotcha. Right. Let me sure. Let me, I got it. Yeah. I, I'm saying other people may not get it, so I'm gonna just repeat it. One cycle is 263 days. It's the morning star. Eight days where it can't be seen. All right, it's near the sun. 50, 363 days is the evening star. 50 days where it's far from the far point from the sun. That's one cycle. This is one cycle. That's 584 days. And another, in those four more cycles, make this forms this five point star in the sky. So I, you don't have to, it's already formed in the sky. The, so the roads, go ahead. So, so, the, so our ancient um, ancestors were watching the stars and Absolutely. charting the yes. movement to that exact degree to see 
that that's what happened in a 584 times eight. In eight years. Eight years. Yeah, in an eight year period. Eight year period. That's amazing. So when you see this, you're looking at a shine again. That's the cycle. There's a five cycles of Venus. So it's not just a symbol to worship. The idol worshiping leaves once you understand, once you um, put the astronomy math to it. The only the only way to the alleviate the idol worshiping is you got to put the math in science because that's the origin of it. Anything outside of that is going to continue being idol worship. Math and science, math and science. That's what I'm doing. Give me the math and science. What they did was they took the math and science and suppressed it. And then leads to idol worship. Now we don't want people to, now you can do that as long as you have this. We did do this because we give an honor to nature. Nature's ball, nature's God, it's like epistemology. But we had this though. As I'm doing this, I have this in my mind. I can do this, but I got this in my mind. All right? The problem is people don't have that this in their mind. They do it to the cross, to everything. Yes? But just on that same day, we, you know, we um, were away the past week, and we went to a, you know, to a full moon ritual, and the experience, uh, some of the things that I saw there and have pictures of, one was the not only talking about Venus, but say the setting of the sun. When the sun was setting in the west from the shore, from looking from the beach towards the west, where the sun was setting, it actually formed, looked as if it was on a cross. You could see, you know, like I said, I call it like the cross. You, you saw the cross, it was coming down, and it, the, the rays went out and up, and so it almost it looks, looked like a cross. The next morning at sunrise, we watched the sun come over the horizon of the ocean. As it rose, it had actually had a picture, someone took a picture of me looking at it, and there it looks like wings and a halo as it came up over that. So here we what we've done is turn those wings and the halo into um, a man, you know, Jesus with wings coming to save you, as opposed to seeing actually when the sun rises with healing in its wings, that that's the, what it looks like visually, and that was a descriptive, but not to be worshipped as as a being. All right. All right, you'll do that. All right. So that's interesting. Uh, we're going to get into the cross, what forms the cross, because you also have the Constellation, the Southern Cross. We have a we have a, a, a constellation, a natural, a natural constellation called the Southern Cross. Right. All right, of five stars that forms that that, that cross you see up that it's on church buildings. All right, so that's a natural pattern. All right, that's in the sky. All right, a constellation that's formed called the Southern Cross. That's one aspect of the cross. We'll, we'll get into the other aspect a little later. Okay. So I just want to make sure people are clear on this. All right, any other questions? So we clear that the five pointed or how the five pointed star is connected to the holy day. All right? Not, not, not totally, but. That's why I'm asking. No, but it That's why I'm here. I, I think I just That's why. No, 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 that's not good enough. We're not going to be, we, we're not going to be, we need to listen to the more. What don't, all right, talk to me. We're not, it's not listening anymore. I'm here. Give it a mic. No, no, you got to take the mic, sister. You're not, you're not going to be, not, I'm not, I'm staying right here. I'm going to wait for you. I'm not, you got the floor. I need you to tell me what you're not getting. Well, I never even learned anything about this whole subject. So when I came into um, the teachings, you know, learning 
uh, about myself and my life and history, all of these different things to me being a war. Uh, my grand chief had a prison in New York and it shut down because there was so much corruption going on. So I never really got the lessons, all the lessons. It's coming, you know, everything is, is coming together slowly, but I never, never learned anything about them. And so I'm just, I think that if I'm, if I study and just listen, that I will grasp it better because you're asking me, do I understand the concept? You know what that concept means, but I don't understand any of it. I'm just learning it, so I, you know. Let me say this right now. You don't need to study anything right now. Okay. I'm talking about this second. Right. I'm talking about literally this second. I understand. I'm standing in front of you. So you saying that you have to study? I'm standing here in front of you. I need. I want to ask you, what are you not getting? The whole subject. About, I just learned right. about this whole subject. I, I just learned about the points and the you know and just right. different things like. You know, my brothers were five percenters, and they know all these numbers and all these different. I never got into this. Well, let's, let me let me stop you there. Let's keep it within this. Okay. Not your brothers. I understand, but no, I'm just, let's stay let's stay I'm within this. I'm just listening. All right. I want, are you clear? So let me ask you questions then. Okay. So since I'll ask you questions. Okay. Are you clear that the each point? of the pentagram represents one cycle of yes. Venus. So this is one cycle of Venus. Right. Are you clear, so I'm going to ask you questions, that this 363 days where Venus is the morning star, eight days where it can't be seen, all right? Right. 360 days, 360 days is the evening star. Right. 50 days it can't be seen constitutes one cycle of 584 days. Are you clear on that? I'm, I'm clear. That's on one that. point. Okay. Let's do it again. <laughs> Two points. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do it. Go through the cycle again. Third point. Okay. Cycle again. Okay. Four points. Okay. Cycle again. Five points. Okay. All right. Five. Five hundred eight. Five. Five hundred eighty-four day cycles. An eight-year period forms this five-pointed star. Talk to me. Uh, okay, I was thinking that the eight-year period, the eight-year period covers the whole cycle, the whole five points. Yes. Oh, okay. Five. One. Um, <laughs> you got to talk to me. Tell me. Talk to me. Talk okay. Me. So. Okay. So I'm understanding uh, eight years. So if I break it down and divide it into five points, the eight years divided by five. No, 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 not, not eight years, not eight years divided by five, all right? You say 584 times five. And yes. There you go, that, exactly. And you divide that by 365 days that's it. in a year, and that gives you eight years. There you go, that's it. That's the math. You want to write that down? It's... Yeah, you can, though. Like, yeah, I'm not rushing you with my learning. I'm just no, not understanding what you're saying. Sister, I'm not rushing. I'm here. I'm staying here. I'm right here. Chief, they're all talking to me. I'm trying to understand. Okay. All right. Talk to them. You told me that the complete cycle was eight years, so I was trying to understand how it was broken down. Now I'm trying, um, they're, they're telling me that, it, you know, if they all equal up to eight years. Okay. So the, no, no, the no, cycle. No, no, no. You said who said, you said all, you know, all equal up to eight years. All the all the different points on the star. Yes, eight years. Yes. Equal yes. Okay. Yes, five hundred eighty-four days. All right, times five. Yes. All right. Two thousand nine hundred. All right, there we go. Let's do it. Five eighty-four days. All right, days. The five is what? Cycles. That represents cycles. All right? Yes, yes. Cycles of Venus. All right? Five cycles of Venus. Equals what? How many days? 2,520. 920 days. 
And you divided that by what? All right, divided by 365. Divided by 365. And get eight years. Okay. That's, that's the math. That's how you do it. That's the math. Uh, thank you. All right? Thank you. So it's not about you studying later. I don't want you to. There's no need for you to leave out of here not knowing this when I'm standing right here. Okay. You know, that's all I'm saying. You don't have to say, try to figure out. You don't need to figure out later. Figure out now. All right? Any other questions? Yes. Have we answered your? Have we, it's not clear in my mind if we've answered the question. Knowing that, how does that connect to our holy day? All right, you answer that because fri Friday is Freya day, Freya day, Freya is O Norse, F R I. You know day. Because not that's two different that's two words. Mm -hmm. You have free up and day. Free up and day. Put them on the board. All right. Friday's two. That's a call. That's called a blend. So we got a blend. So free up plus day blend it to Friday. Come on. Free up plus day. Blends to Friday. This is the old Norse word for the planet Venus. So if you're saying happy holy day, and the day is Friday, you're giving honor to Venus. All right, hmm. I'm not saying, he said, well, Abdullah, you used improper grammar. No, I didn't. But Abdullah, you said, hmm. But hmm is related to a person, and that. Oh, you don't know our epistemology. Our epistemology is nature. This is, we didn't, it's not an it. No. Not an it. A house is not an it. A house is a she. Talk to me. Talk to me. The Europeans took the gender out. So don't say casa. It's the what? That's feminine. What do Europeans do? They remove the gender. They remove the concept of gender. No, 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 no. Not male. People don't say he. House. But people don't associate with I. Do you call your house a he? No. So they remove the gender. They didn't make a male, they knew the gender, period. And they're this. It. Well, that's not our epistemology. Our epistemology is not it. You understood the frequency. This has a frequency. This is moving. Man, Abdullah lost his mind. No, no. He said, This pen is moving. It's not. This pen's not moving. Get a fine instrument. Get a fine instrument. And you feel the you'll see the vibration. Alright? It's moving slow because what? It's solid. The molecules are moving. Get a fine instrument. I'm not talking out my mind. This is moving. I'm talking about the molecules. It gives a certain frequency. That's where I'm coming from. Laws of nature and nature of God, that's our epistemology. So we're talking house, it has a gender. So in the translation, they what? We move the gender, the concept of gender. So we're not, so we are put, apply genders to objects, plants, or she, are beautiful. She is beautiful. This is not our epistemology. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. Where do you get that from? Why are you saying it? Who gave you that concept of it? When your ancestors were saying she, 
But we probably say, go back to that state of mind of our, of our foremost and forefathers. That's what I'm doing. Give you the proper epistemology. You write the word epistemology on the board. And I don't want to assume that people know how to spell it. Epistemology. A branch in philosophy that deals with how one knows knowledge. And our epistemology is nature. The Europeans have it in the Declaration of Independence. The Europeans had reserved their ancient epistemology. Laws of nature and nature's God. So, people say God. They take not epistemology. God said this. God don't like ugly. God gonna get you. God gonna damnation. Praise God. That's not our epistemology. That's not our epistemology. The Europeans gave it to you. Laws of nature and nature's God. You see how God is in the con context of nature? Laws of nature and nature's God. They reserve the epistemology in the Declaration of Independence. But of course, people won't say, that's a European thing. Well, they won't. That's not y'all say European. I'm not. They'll say, that's the white man thing. That's the white man thing. And he's not the white man. He's not the sovereign. He's not the white man. Alright? Yes. Sorry, yes, and something sorry. Oh, please don't be sorry. I know. I apologize. Don't hurt me. Don't, you're not hurting. Are you, no, are not hurting. you hurting? I know that was wrong. All right. Um, correction. The the thought came to mind when you said laws of nature, nature's God. When we talk about the origin of the word God. How, how how ancient is that um, terminology? Is was that the actual word? Oh, that's true not. Okay, that's true not. Because we said that God is a, a what, Middle English word or something. So what was it? All right, wait, wait. I was, when I was when I so just before I answer that, just to put it, let me put up here laws of nature and nature's God. When I was explaining. All right, you see how God is placed, the word God is placed in this context? Do people, when they say the word God, do they say it in this context? No. Yeah. What do they do? This, God gonna get you. God don't like ugly. Pray to God. Almighty God. They don't put it in this context. So this is what I would explain it, Dr. Ayala, is that the Europeans do though. This is in the day they have preserved the God. You know that this, the God is modern English. Right. All right, I'm gonna give you the origin. All right, but I'll talk about the context of it that's in this phrase. The mass of the people, even Europeans, do not use it in this context. They don't they don't connect nature with God. He gonna get you. Praise to God. Oh my God. God don't like ugly. Do you know God? Is not, am I correct on that? Yeah. You're right, you're right. Right. Do they? Laws of nature, nature's God. They don't, there's no connection. In fact, if you start doing that, I go, I go outside mm -hmm. in the morning and go like this to the sun. Ooh, God gonna get you. Am I right? I'm not even that big. Go outside. You sun baby. The sun, the sun is a source of energy. It stimulates the serotonin and melatonin in the brain. So there's a biochemical relationship. When I was um, substituting in a, in a um, freshman science class, and uh, the, the teacher, European male, did a PhD in high school, ninth, ninth grade, and we were 
talk that this he was the chapter was on photosynthesis. And I had my, I was in the back of the classroom, I had my head down as the teacher was giving instruction. I was, I was an assistant. So I had my head down, and in the course of his saying and discussing photosynthesis, he said, photos, he, he drew an analogy. He said, photosynthesis is to plants as melanin is to black people. I'm just quoting him, quoting him. My head rose up in disbelief. Not that he knew it, that he what? Said it. That he said it. I'm like, oh, man. He said that to these Ajax students? He don't have melanin or very little of it. The students he's the students he was telling that to had melanin. Wow. And what he drew the analogy to photosynthesis. They don't know. They look at it. What I show, document, in my Illuminati book. Show my number book. What I document in my, my Illuminati book. Right? This will be back. In my Illuminati book, let's put this out in April 2016 is the tremendous amount of research, biochemical and biotechnological research the Europeans have been using with melanin. Billions are something that you, that's produced naturally in you. Billions have been spent on biotechnology using the study of melanin. So I wanted to document that because I wanted to get out of the way for that emotion. You know, we got, you know, got melanin. I wanted to show that they can see the importance of melanin through the research and finance that the Europeans have been put have put into melanin. There's one doctor, I think in Italy, Polish, in Poland, that I document in the Illuminati book. And a period of 20 years, he's been using melanin to treat cancer patients. One research documents that because melanin can absorb a tremendous amount of radiation, melanin in the hospitals over here have been used in treating cancer patients as well. There is another research that was documented where over a period of 20 years, one of the, um, at Queens College, Queensbury Berry College, where they were spending 20 years of time researching on how to use melanin for cell phone batteries, because there's cell phone batteries now, to replace the silicone battery with melanin-based batteries. So, what else we are, so as I'm reading these research, I'm like, wow, we're walking batteries. Literally walking batteries. We have no, yes. Can I share something that I, I, I wrote and that goes, goes along with what you just said? Absolutely. Um, it's a poem I wrote in 2016 called The Sun Kissed. It says, um, don't tell me I'm not loved by the sun. You see, I am sun-kissed while they are sun-burned. It's a cosmic love affair for which others yearn. Our interaction creates liquid gold. When they get too close, it makes them grow old. The sun within me activates a life-sustaining precious matter about which much scientific chatter has created a sort of feeding frenzy that now desperate vamps hunt me to drain my dark substance to help them exist in this cosmic love affair between the sun and the sun kissed. And that was basically about how we, melanin works for us and against, I mean, the sun, the sun and melanin works for us does something different in them, in others. You know what I observed that when I was nine years old? Uh, my friend Robert, when I was growing up, European, 
foster food from right, you know, in fact, he had lived on the block prior to our moving there. I was nine years old. And he was one of my best friends growing up. You know, they would be, you know, play together, basketball, football, back, you know, baseball. And he and I would go to the, uh, how I'm talking about in the summer, I'm talking about 90 degree weather, 95. We talk about 12, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And he and I would be out there playing basketball. I mean, for two or three hours. You know, we, and we did this on a regular basis. And he, like I said, I didn't know, I, you know, I, I'm nine years old, nine, ten years old. So he would burn. I mean, he would get me all burnt up, and I'm like, I mean, walking on, he's like, he's like this, walking all burnt up, and I'm like, I didn't know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, that's what I observed then. That's through observation of why. I was asking myself, why I'm not burned? Why is he burned and I'm not? We didn't start the same amount of time. What makes me different? Because I couldn't explain it biochemically. You know? You don't think Europeans know that? Mm -hmm. They experience it. Mm -hmm. Go to the beaches. Yeah. They all burnt up. You don't need, yes. I experienced it personally. Because I got a, I got a white grandmother and a black grandfather on uh -huh. my mother's side. Uh -huh. And when me and my uh, fiance go to the beach, I get burnt and she don't. She teased me about it. Right. You know, I get burnt all over the place, man. Oh, so, melanin. Well, you have melanin too. You have melanin. Yeah, I know. Some don't, don't agree with me a lot. Feet and everything be burnt up, and she be sitting there fine laughing at me. So it's the it's the the carbon, because melanin is carbon. All right, C A R carbon. And the code for carbon in the Bible is what? Six. 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 All right. I love that number. Man, God gonna get you. God gonna crucify you. God don't like ugly. All right? So six carbon, six it. electrons, six neutrons. Yes. So that's carbon 12. So it's carbon 12. All right? And carbon 12 is in the brain. It's called normal melanin. And carbon 12 is all around you. So something, so the sun. There's a symbiotic relationship that we have with the sun. The sun stimulates the serotonin and melatonin in the brain. The word for this is Christ. The Christ, which is the oil that's secreted in the brain. Christ, Kras, Egyptian, Krishna, and Sanskrit. You have what's called the Indus Kush Valley. The Indus Kush. So you have Christ, and you have the Sanskrit, and Egyptian, Kras. So the Kras, or Krishna, is a biochemical word. They took the word out of the, out of the epistemology. It's a biochemical word. You can't, Europeans can't do that. The word Christ has nothing to do with Europeans. That's okay. I'm not, it's not a prejudice. Not a, it has, I'm talking biochemical. Once you place the word in its proper epistemology and study it, Europeans do that. They do it. They have access to the research, the labs, the funding. They know who we are. I'm not talking about every Europe, I'm talking about the, the, the research. Trust me. Melanop no, no, pills. Yes. For sleeping. Melatonin. Melatonin pills. Oh my, I can just go to sleep. Um suntan lotion. There you go. Something you that's produced naturally. Mm -hmm. Regarding the suntan lotion. Harmonic sounds. Harmonic sounds. Um the pills, no sleeping pills. Melatonin. Yeah. And they got, and they, well, there's a cancer called what? Melanoma. 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 Oh, wow. 
What's melanoma? Why is it called melanoma though? Why do they call it melanoma? Someone look up melanoma, please. Why do they call it melanoma? Yeah, melanoma. No, you know, they have they have the norma. That's a that's a they use that in medical terminology. The norma is it's, it's called a. Uh, Color, darkening of the skin. Darkening of the skin. According to many, it could be darkening. The most serious type of skin cancer. The most serious type of skin cancer is called melanoma. Wow. So they you know they can just call it that because we don't know about melanin. Oh, Carmen, yes. Okay. Good day, yes. You were talking about the uh, secretion. Yes, secretion. Mm -hmm. So, is that that's some gland in the brain? The yeah, the, 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 yes, the pineal gland. The pineal gland, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so it's the sun, the sunlight stimulates that, the secretion. It aids in the, it aids in the secretion. So the, the third eye. Oh. It, this the third eye stimulated leads to clairvoyance, yeah. telepathy, higher brain functioning, a higher frequency, mm -hmm. higher insight. Mm -hmm. It's natural. This is not. It's it's all natural. I'm saying we do it. We do it today. They call it schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. She's seeing things. Well, he hearing things. See what they say? Something you do naturally. Thank you. So they call it schizophrenia. Oh, yes, something about to happen. Oh, my brother, man. You're crazy. There you go. There you go. There you go. So it's all, so some of us do it. But because of that, the Europeans, they have that in place. Schizophrenia. They they're watching us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then they want to slow you down with want, Ritalin. Yes. Mm -hmm. Slow us down with Ritalin. Mm -hmm. Question. Comment. Comment. Criticism. Talk about this. Talk about the sun and their skin versus our brings to mind the biblical account of the lepers and who those mm -hmm. what was going on. Actually, it was because the sun, they couldn't stand the sun and their skin was peeling and burning and, and so forth. And we have been given stories of some disease that God, I know. but I guess nature, has uh, put upon a certain amount of people and they went from whatever they were to leprous when the truth of the matter is they were dealing with the sun and the effects of the sun, what we're talking about burning the skin and, and giving them the, causing them not to be able to live within the same compounds of everyone else. And there's science that's there's science that's proved this. I mean it's not it's not a belief. So if someone says to me, I'll do it, that's your belief. So on what basis are you saying because now they're classifying it as a belief. Why don't we just show them scientific research? So many amount of finance has been put into this. It's not a belief, it's a knowledge base. My friend Robert, nine years old, going to nine, ten years old, he's burning up and I'm not. Is that a belief? Nope. And is that belief? Yeah. Is that a, that's what that's the reality I saw yeah. over a period of years. Because we play basketball, baseball together out in the sun. Yeah. I observed that. Is that belief? Yeah. Right, why, why did not burn? You say we're the same, but why did I burn them? You know? So I'm not coming with, you know, this, I'm not presenting in the way of this hate thing. I, that's, I don't need to present like that. I don't need to present. I got information. I can present documentation. I don't need to present stuff like that. You know, they, you know, they ain't no good. I don't present stuff like that. 
the documentation, research done by them. Of course, we're not doing research because we don't have the, the, the funding. We're not doing research. We, of course, we're capable of doing research, we don't have the, the funding. Because you talk about funding, you talk about corporations and companies that pay people, scientists, to do this type of research. There's a there's a there's a uh, co there's a glasses sunglasses called metal lens, and they coat the lenses with melanin. We don't need that. What do we need that for? What do we need the metal lenses for? All right. So it's not just in the skin. The carbon twelve is all around us. That's the key to life. There's a branch in, a branch in chemistry called organic chemistry mm -hmm. that dedicates this one million carbon combinations. Not chemistry, organic chemistry. They're studying us. Fam. Yes, um, Not fam. Mm -hmm. Ken. Yes. <laughs> well, you said funding. Our, you know, our ancient foremothers and forefathers did not need financing to study self. And one of the things that we and Prophet, well, this is one thing that Prophet Noble Ali has taught is to study yourself. And we must get back to that, studying nature, studying ourselves in relationship to nature, and we will see all these things unfolding right before us. Nature will speak to you as we was talking on the uh, moon ritual that we just went to where, you know, you're able, if you're sitting down and meditating, you can actually start hearing the wind giving, talking to you and giving you some direction, some information. You know, you can, um, the moon, you look at the moon, you can actually see the moon smiling at you. You can see the face of the moon smiling at you. These are some amazing things that we was able to see. If you just, if you're just, you know, still enough, if you sit still enough and, you know, quiet the negative vibration allowed to come into a, a harmonic path with nature and, you know, you know, we, we can hear these things and see these things. Yes, so. We'll draw another one and then put a circle around. All right, so you've seen this. You see this in heavy metal groups. Heavy metal groups, hard rock groups, right? They have the uh, the bull or the uh, goat horns. Yeah. Horns. Okay. All right, you've seen that. So that's good. All right, so that's. What does this mean? We have some knowledge of what we know. What this means. We know what this means. All right. What this means is the earth, that's the earth, and most the earth, and Venus. So this, this occurs, this earth and Venus conjunction occurs every eight years. Not something to spook out about. Now, there have been Europeans who have distorted this. The heavy metal groups wear black. Hmm. Hard rock groups, heavy metal groups. Big. Europeans are more, Europeans are, Europeans are connected. Um, they adopted this. Mm -hmm. you, a lot of Europeans, like in heavy, they're young. Mm -hmm. They're young. I went to a tattoo convention about three years ago in Philadelphia. A huge at the convention center. And they're in their twenties, people who were there, the vendors, and um, people who were there were in their twenties. You know, the customers, they were in their, they were in their twenties. And I, I observed the tattoos. And I'm observing. They're walking up with tattoos on, I'm looking, observing with tattoos, I'm looking at the book. You know what I mean? I'm observing the book. Tattoo book, you know what I mean? Picking out what tattoo you want. It was this, it was this, the snake. 
the two predominant ones is this and the snake. Now, we get spooked up about that. These Europeans walk around with black, black horn, black lipstick, black makeup, five point star, play the circle, the goat, the horns, the snake, and walk around. We are scared of that. Why are they scared? Why are they like us? I mean, why are they scared? Why are they scared though? These are just funny. I'm talking about thousands of them. There was thousands of them there. Why are they scared? I, I think the um, they had a parade recently this week in D in DC, and they they these are the symbols that were used. Can I give them this mic? Go ahead. Um, a friend of mine was telling me last night, this morning, that. A satanic uh, group uh, were called in, in D.C. This, this week using the, the, this symbol and the goat and the black calling on the churches to join them. Now I didn't really catch up on that article but this is the symbol that she was telling me that she was reading and right. it happened this week. So we already know what this five point star is. And you see the five point star within the circle. That's the Earth and Venus conjunction of eight years. This occurs every eight years. You see the rose. Ras occlusion. The Ras occlusion uses the five point petal what? Rose. Five petals. Right there. Taking this stuff. Taking our stuff. So the, why do they wear black? The Kaaba is a meteorite. Black meteorite within a cube. It is a moon shrine. But I thought the moon was silver. Black is used for the moon. Seen at night. At night. So that's why they wear the black. The moon being seen at night. Why? Because we started our day cycle, our cycle of the day at night, not at sun's rise. At what? Sun set and you see the moon. There you go. All right. Because you what? Your, your, your calendar is the moon calendar. Right? You see the 13 and 28 days. You have the Inshanga bone, 28 markings. All right? You have, uh, you have uh, reindeer bones or reindeer horn, the, the, the markings on it. 28. You have bracelets and amulets and anklets, statuettes. With horns, the crescent shaped, the crescent shaped moon, for horns. So I'm not saying that that all those all those young folks in heavy metal groups, heavy metal, hard rock, know this. You said you just for the symbology, but just for the symbols, most of them. Yeah, but they're connected, but I'm saying they're still aligned with it, though. They're still aligned with it. Maybe, maybe not. Say, they I'm not saying they know what I know. I'm not saying anybody I know. Because they, 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 they're young. Well, they, what, 16 years old and 21. And they're young, and they see their brothers or sisters in it. And, you know what I mean? It's just something that they, you know, they do. And they wear the black and lipstick and everything. And they and heavy metal and hard rock. And that's... That's part of what, you know, they, they, they got to wear. Right, but they don't. They call it three. But there's so many of them, though. As I went to the, when I went to that tattoo convention, I saw thousands of them there. And I'm like, whoa. And they have them tattoo conventions all over, all the major cities. 
And I'm sure the one in Chicago was probably just as big as the one they had in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. California. They're just as big as the one they had. I mean, it was packed. They had a big area in the, in the um, convention center. But um, Islam brought up the word. But it's also connected to like energy. Um, it's connected to, I would say, a negative source energy in which they vibrate on. So if they are utilizing that, which is meant for good and using it for evil, that's the vibration that is sent out the most. However, we have to raise the vibration of the true origin and meaning of Venus and the earth cycles and its true nature to the earth, we that we have to get that knowledge out and raise that vibration to override the vibration of the um the it's like the yin and yang effect. You know, they they yang it like, you know, our brother Terari said they're yanging out of control. You know, we have to bring the yin back in where we have that that balance, my eye, you know, we got, so we, the lesson must go forward of the true origin and science of Venus in its connection to nature and fertility and, and um, the eight cycles and things of that nature. That vibration must be raised to, to repair the earth because right now it's, it's, being, it's, it's killing the earth with the negative vibration of saying this star represents the negative aspect. This star represents darkness, which is evil. This star represents that. No, this star represents light. This star represents new beginning, new creation. That's the message that must go forward. Yes. yes. Uh, let me. So, what she's saying in essence is that those Europeans, heavy metal groups, those guys, those ones in the 20s, They may, they're calling on, they, they're using our science, our imagery, all right? But in a demonic way, you know, they, they're calling some evil, you know, when this is not the origin of it, she's giving us the origin, so we have to reverse the polarity of it. So, they, so these Europeans are not teaching what I'm teaching. They are allowing the misconception, you know, those who know are allowing that misconception of it being evil. So those, so those young folks thinking they're connected to something that's evil. When they actually they're not, but they think that in their mind, they think, so it's, it's so temporary is right, that the thinking of those young Europeans of I want to connect with the devil, and the devil is not evil, but because they think it's that, they think the devil is evil. They think it's evil. The devil is not evil. The devil is the moon. This is the, the devil. The devil is the moon. So, huh? What I'm saying is, the constant the image that's been paraded all over the world for X amount of years. Literally all over the world. What does that image look like? What image has been created all over the world that they call the devil? This world has been connected to such image. I'm not talking about the etymology of the world. I'm not getting into the etymology of the world right now. I'm talking about is it an image. When I say this word, y'all have an image that comes to your mind. There's an image. When I go next door. Go next door. I say this word. There's an image that comes to the mind. Go to the next house. I say that word. There's an image. Yes, it is. There's an image. What image is that? What image will come to this, the one that lives next door's mind? What image? Thank you. Right. Right. Everything has an origin. Everything has an origin. Where did that come from? Where did that come from? Hold on, Dr. J, I got you. Let me just, let me go give, let me give them a chance to, I got you. Instead of I'm trying to give other people a chance. All right? That's why I tell this story, that's why I didn't talk about it. Rose Bay saved the goat. All right. The goat, good. 
Good. Why, why the goat? Why was the goat used? I gave the answer three, uh, three minutes ago. Why was the goat used? What does the goat have? That's related to the moon. The horns. The crescent shaped horns. So we use that as a, as a, a symbol of fertility because we saw the first quarter moon because you can't see the new moon. You can't see the new moon. So when do you be, when do you see when do you start seeing the moon? When it's what crescent shape. So that was that was a so we see the goat on the hill or goats and we see all and, and pools and we see these crescent shaped horns. So we're gonna you gonna bring it up here. Or you want to keep it back to the end? <laughs> All right. Well, that's what you just, you just did. Well, you what got it. Other folks use this to... Okay. Come on. I don't want to come up, come up. Why not? Well, I'm just saying. This is the shofar, which is the horn of a tiger to them. And they use it to... They use it, you know, actually carve it out and use it as a call, sort of a call to worship, sort of, yes. and, and so forth, and it was ne never used in a negative connotation. It was actually, you know, so now we have all of these, when you see this, it's on the head of some, you know, thing that's like this, two of these, and it's like, and it actually, and it's, it's, the devil. it's not. It's evil. Uh, yes. This is an actual ram's horn. So, once you know this, the, the, the importance, how we used, how the moon was a basis for our way of life, for our timekeeping, our measurement, and everything that we did. So what do Europeans do? Let's flip it. They took the Sumerian word Sin. So I go next door. Sin. I'm pointing to the moon. Sin. And don't let me like I'm crazy. Right. No, 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 knucklehead. That's the moon. Oh, you just gave me the English word. That's all. Oh, you gave me the English word. I'm giving you the Sumerian word. You giving me the English word? I'm giving you the Sumerian word. That's all. That's good. I'm just giving the Sumerian word. Sumerian word for what you're gonna see when you leave out tonight is sin. The English word is what? That's all. I'm just trying to make it simple. It ain't all that. It's not all that. The problem is, is that we've been there you go, and it's been distorted, and we fear. Just saying, I'm just saying the Sumerian word for that beautiful um, she image. I don't want to say goddess, because then I'm going to say, <laughs> so, like, you know, because that's still, that's the English form. All right? So, it's, I tell them to give me the, um, right, God comes from the Sanskrit, Kuda. I Sanskrit. So the origin of it is not English. There's origin of there's no such word that you say English. It is an, it is it's a, it is an a proper epistemology. Improper epistemology say English origin. English form, but not English origin. There's no word of English origin. This is Sanskrit. And it means it invoke. Call upon. So the God is a verb, is what you do. You are invoking, you're invoking thoughts. You are guiding. It's not God going to get you. God don't like ugly. They took it out as epistemology. 
to the scripture that talks about um, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin from um, did my mother conceive me? Doesn't that have to do with the moon and the cycle? Yes, yes, well, let's look at that. But people, you know, see themselves as born a, it, well, they're born a sinner, then yeah, you're born a mooner. <laughs> but, but, you already, but you already know why people see it that way, because they've been indoctrinated. They've been given a distorted, connotated meaning for the word moon. But so many people think yes. sin, they were born in sin. And when they think sin and iniquity, like I'm, I'm just the lost cause unless I get saved. Once you give them the etymology, because in order for them to not think that way anymore, you gotta give them the etymology. Because I don't know any other way to get them to stop thinking that way. You got to give them the etymology anymore. As long as they think sin is some bad deed. So what that really should say was in the cycle of the moon did my mother conceive me. Right, right. But they're also using English vernacular too. They're right. using English syntax. Because what they... you got a Sanskrit word. A Sanskrit word using being used in English syntax. Out of context. And, and you know that, you know about that in your... your um, Theological. Your, well, let's give the right word. Uh, hermeneutics. Yeah, hermeneutics. Okay. Hermeneutics. Hermeneutics is the, is the study of biblical interpretation. There are three German Germans, those who study hermeneutics in theology school, that study theories that were developed by three, three Germans. And, and studying Dr. G, don't know what I'm talking about. She didn't study, they didn't relate epistemology. Because to study hermeneutics, right? You can't, there's, there's no way, that's that's all, that's the story. You cannot study hermeneutics. So I have H B R R M E N M E N E N E I Yeah, hermeneutics. Alright. You can't study hermeneutics and talk about biblical interpretation. Right. Biblical, come on, talk to me up. And turn. Was the Bible written in modern English for its origin? No. 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 So, but yet, you're using modern English, right? Today, class, this is class one of hermeneutics. And the text you give is modern English. Excuse from the beginning, because your context is wrong. Your conclusion will always be it's already You're already off because you're using modern English. There's modern English syntax, modern English connotations. So what's the interpret? So you're not using epistemology, etymology, philology. You have to use, if you talk about biblical interpretation, if you say it's hermeneutics, well, Dr. G, you never study hermeneutics. No, 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 not no, really. No, 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, any other questions? So, so being born in sin, so we're looking at the moon, you know, sense, this thing is word, moon. So we're looking at fertility, right? So, what does it mean to be born in sin? Concept of 
Psycho. Have you seen it before? Is it a symbol of worship? No. They got like grave sites. Wow. Yes. Grave sites. Alright. Now, they are megalithic. The stone, sun, stone, circles. There's thousands of sunstone circles. Now Europe, Canada, North America, Central, Central America, South America, Africa, uh, parts of Africa, Japan, all right? Many, there are thousands of sunstone circles. So this is emblematic of the megalithic sunstone circles that mark the four cardinal points of four seasons. This is universal and ancient knowledge. One culture, one civilization. I show that there's one world culture, the same things worldwide. The same concept is worldwide. I prove that there's no such calendar called, ever called, Julian calendar. And then he changed the Julian calendar to the Gregorian calendar. So we gotta have our own calendar. So we're using this white man's calendar. Hmm. All right. I need y'all shot. Abdul doesn't know what he's talking about. No problem with that. Prove to me that the European established a calendar. Anybody? That they established a calendar. I just said to you that these major lists are worldwide and thousands of years old. It's older than them. So that the concept of charting the four seasons, that sunstone circles because they thought they they charting the four seasons is ancient. So to be able to put something on paper 
that what? Swap first. No. It's not the piece of paper that you call the calendar. This is the calendar. The charting first has to be done. They didn't do that. So what calendar did they even establish? The problem is that people don't know what a calendar is. They look at a calendar as a piece of paper, a book. You know, they got, you know, January, February, March, April, May. Yeah, go to the calendar. They chart off the date. Go to the calendar. But what is the basis of the calendar? How does how is the calendar developed? Most people can't even answer that question. I can't hear you. Is that based on sign and cosine? Sign and cosine. I got it. I can't hear her. Is that based on sign and cosine? Yes. Yes. All right. So she's talking trigonometry. She's talking trigonometry. So she's talking sine and cosine. She's talking trigonometry. And trigonometry. All right. She's talking trigonometry. We have plain trigonometry and spherical, spherical trigonometry. Right? Plain trigonometry and spherical trigonometry. Plain trigonometry is, you know, flat surfaces. Used for flat surfaces. Spherical trigonometry is for what? Spheres. All right, curves. Absolutely. Spherical trigonometry. So this is used in astronomy. You, don't, you can't use the plane trigonometry in studying the sun. You can use spherical, spherical trigonometry in studying the sun. This is all together. So one who, someone who studies astronomy must study spherical trigonometry. That's the math. It's the math. All right? So sine and cosine, you have Now, I want to just look at, see, I want to determine how high a tree is. How do, what do you do? Since you say kind of bump, sine and cosine, what do you do to, to measure the height of the tree? What, you said sine and cosine, so I think, so I think, I'm assuming you have some knowledge. Use the microphone. I'm assuming you have some knowledge. You say sine and cosine. I'm assuming you have some knowledge. I, but I'm saying you have a height of a tree. All right, we're doing, we're doing the daytime. We want to study the height of a tree. We want to measure the height of a tree. What do you measure? What's that? The shadow. Yeah, the shadow. There you go. The shadow. So it casts the shadow. All right, down the hall, see the shadow. Shadow. Right? So you have your arm with this. Your arm. So she's talking sine and cosine, she's talking trigonometry, she's talking measuring of shadows, the casting of shadows. Alright, you would have your this point, they use this, they make sure they call it the point within the circle. And this point within the circle is simply a pole. I can't touch that. There it is. That's my pole. That's my point. All right. So there's my circle right here. I have a rope. All right. And of course, it's big, bigger. Bigger. Some, some, some circles are bigger than this room. Four times as big as this room. Four times. Five times. Six times as big as this room. All right. Huge mechanisms. So now you have. This pole or stick, and you are seeing where the shadows cast. Sine and cosine. And yes, you are using the knowledge of sine and cosine. All right? We did that thousands of years ago. So they're not just some megaliths. 
these sunstone circles that were just arbitrarily plotted. Um, arbitrary, with no arbitration done. A knowledge of math. This is universal. One culture, one civilization. What's my evidence? How can you have the same structure worldwide? What does that mean? The same, the same structure worldwide. What does that mean? One culture, one civilization. They already, already had the knowledge. So where does European Universal Calendar come from? There's no such thing as a Gorian calendar. Because they put their name on it in 1582. Quote unquote Pope Gregory, which is the Egyptian title. 1582. The Gregory XIII. He jumped the calendar by 10 days. In 1582, October 10th, 1582. You're not going to see October 12th, 1582. October 13th, 1582. October 15th, you're not going to see that. You're not going to see. October 16, 1582. He jumped the calendar by 10 days. So you go to bed, it's October 10th, 1582. You wake up the next morning, it's October 21st, it's October 20th, 1582. Now, why did he jump the calendar by 10 days? Or why he had permission to the calendar? He jumped by astronomers, astronomers using the Egyptian calendar. Every four, every four years, there's a quarter degree lax. So he had to what? Keep up with the calculations. He had to make adjustments, had to be made. The knowledge of astronomers do that. Astronomers have that knowledge. So they had to make the adjustments. So they're calling that the Gorgonian calendar. And they put his name on it. They did not establish a calendar. This is a calendar. The make stone hinge is a calendar. The sun pyramid. Those pyramid of the sun. And check it is a is a calendar. You just think a piece of paper is. They're calendars. Check it gets up. Who cow can? All right, the pyramid. So that megalith pyramid, there are four sides with 91 steps times four sides is what? 364 in the platform is what? One. Counting all, what is it? How many days? So you mean to tell me that Gregory was born before that? Where did you get the 365 days from, y'all? I'm proving to you that they don't have it in this the calendar. I'm proving, y'all, proving. So anyone coming to me, so supposed to you're going to count, I can prove to them that they didn't establish the calendar. You got 365 days here.
these measurements are calendars. So this topic cost, let me explain topic. Topic is Greek form. We have Egyptos. 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 Modern English, Egypt. All right? Comes from Het, Ka, Pata. Het, Ka, Pata, or the, the temple of Ka of Pata. And the Ka is the breath. Afra Kaaba. Afra Kaaba. It's not a European name. Afra Kaaba. Afra Kaaba. 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 Ra, the sun. Ka, all right, spirit, which is breath. The breath, energy. Ba is soul, which is also connected to breath. Afrikaaba. So the temple of Ka Apata. Had the time, the temple, so the, the Greeks transliterated to Egyptos. So Egyptos, you see this G and C. The G and C are guttural sounds, guttural throat sounds. So the G transliterates, which means across the letter. To the P. So it's this head carpata, a head carpata cross. The head carpata cross. Alright? And we have Celtic, and I'm, and I'm still doing some research on seeing the etymology of the uh, word copy coming from head carpata. Celtic. Celtic. Alright, we have the P and T. I know about the P and T transliteration. Alright, of course, uh, this is. And, so, and oftentimes, what I, I do know are letters are added. So there may not be a transliteration, you may have a letter added. When you add a letter or sound in the middle of a word, that's called sickle. No, no, not single pen. When you add in a letter of sound, prosthesis, paradox, and I can't, I, right now it's iffy. When you add in a letter, there's a, there's a linguistic methodology term when you, for adding a letter, a pocket pen, single pen, and aphoresis are removed. You have Pegasus is the beginning. Paragolge is the middle, is the ending. So I don't, I don't come back to it. When you, you, can, you can remove a letter and add a letter to change the sound. So I'm looking at, I got to do some research here so I can you know, prove my point. I'm hypothesizing. I am hypothesizing. I can do Hypothesize that the that the word Celtic is derived from Hecapita. It's part of it's part of this family. The word Celtic is part of this family. Part of this whole transliteration. I'm hypothesizing. All right. So let me do my hypothesis. Hypothesizing, and then I'll do my research. All right.
questions, criticism, comments. I don't know what I'm talking about. And you guys show me that. When you say I don't know what I'm talking about, you be fine with me, but then once you say that, you got to show me. Okay, so did you, the word, I'm, yes. I'm trying to see the word. Okay, Hekka Pata is the origin of the word. Yes. Okay, and it, and it um, the word transforms through, what is that, Egypt? Yeah, Egyptos. 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 Yes. I should, this should be at the top. Okay, yeah, that for me. Yeah, so that should be at the top. Okay. And this next. Okay, so. I'll, I'll just number it. Okay, so, thanks. Is that right, for me on? Alright, one. Alright, two. Two. Okay. All right, then three. This Egypt is four. Right. Alright, four. Alright, you get it? So split the word. One. Two. Egypt tools. Copy. Three. These are five, four. And I'm thinking something is in there. Now, is that in alignment with the uh, proto Indo European root of family of words or yes. how the words transform Absolutely. throughout the lineage? Yes, so this is Greek here. That's the Greek form. That's the Greek. Yeah, okay. Egyptos. Egyptos. Islam. So Egypt is modern English form, it's Hekkapata. Hekkapata. So this, so this megalith. They didn't have these in on grave sites. This is so over here. Oh, you, wish, you just see a few of these over here. A few. Now I say over here, I'm sorry. I'm saying over here. This part of the Moroccan Empire. Northwest of this, this, this part of the Moroccan Empire. So when I say over here, I'm talking about. The, I'm, I'm denoting over here, over here denotes this. Are you saying northwest of Mexico? Yeah, northwest of Mexico, which is actually more than this. They call it Canada, Mexico. Right? It's north, northwest of Mexico would include what they call Canada and Mexico. So this is part of both. This is part of northwest of Mexico. Part of. Right, so when I say over here, this is what I'm talking about. This land mass. This land mass. Alright? You'll see this one. In great in, in um, great sites. You see this on great sites. You're not gonna see a lot of these. You're not gonna see a lot of these in great sites. In, in, in Ireland and Britain, in Ireland you'll see. You won't see this in Ireland. If you go to grave sites in Ireland, you're not going to see this. Alright? There's no difference. There's not, I'm saying, I'm saying there's a connection here. Don't say, well, that's, that's a different culture. No, it's not. Damn. That's the problem. That's the problem. The epistemology is not that's a symbol. There's sunstone symbols. This is not the origin. The symbol is not the origin. The actual sunstone circle is the origin. Cosine. Sine, conceiving. That's the origin. Shadow casting. Measuring the shadow. Charting the winter solstice, the summer solstice point. That's the origin. Not this. Not this. That's not. So, so that now is the loss of being used to what? So this is actually like if you see the description of the, the day's class. The class is geared to remove idle hypnosis. To remove the idle hypnosis. I'm trying to remove this. I don't need hypnosis by giving you the math. So sunstone circles are the origin. We chart it. 
the four seasons, the four cardinal points. This is a calendar. It is literally a calendar. Oh, I thought just a piece of paper, you know, a book they call a calendar. Oh, that's that's all right. So you don't see the two pillars. So when you see, so when you go to Stonehenge, you don't see Stonehenge in the calendar. But yet, Europeans flock by the thousands. On December 21st, they flock by the, why are we there? Why are we there? Why, why do Europeans flock by the thousands to Stonehenge? On December 21st. They built they built that? No. Exactly the energy. So they see what? That's when the sun is at its highest point. Opposite. Up the lowest point mm -hmm. is going into the topic of what is it, Capricorn? Um, you looking at the you took like the very equinox. Okay. Um that's the uh um, Chopper of Capricorn is it's the it's the vertical equinox. Right. Yes. And it and that's it, when it goes and then it's, it's, it's already right. there. It's already there. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. It's already So there. it's the energy. It's the energy. It's the energy. It's the energy they see they see the the sun, the winter saw the sun, right? Right in between the two pillars. It's a, it's a calendar. It is literally a calendar. So we don't see them as calendars. We take a piece of paper that you got on the wall, we'll call it a calendar. So this, this represents, you know, calendars. This is ancient knowledge. Well, it's, so, just, it's like one of the four holy days. So the yes. highest of the energy is the time for manifestation. As with when we, um, for the moon ritual, we were preparing for the um, manifestation for the new harvest, for the um, for the new no, that's just, um, equinox. Yes, the, uh, the approaching equinox. The approaching equinox. Right. We were manifesting for that period. So each um, for holy seasons should be the time when we all manifest, get in a position to manifest and be still and project for the new opening season of creation. So that's why they make those long journeys to those stone hinges. Yes, they do. Yeah, into the oceans. And we have our African scholars that perpetuate this false Europe, European culture. That, I mean, let me qualify myself. There are scholars, African scholars, one is has since transitioned, who purport that the holidays are European holidays. And one scholar created a quote unquote holiday after the actual holiday. <laughs> he created a holiday, quote unquote. He created a holiday. But you can't, holidays are not man made. So no man can create a holiday. Man charts the holidays. We no no one on this planet at any time in history ever created a holiday. Let me say it again. No man, neither man nor woman that ever walked this planet created a holiday. Why am I saying that? I can see the science, bro. Hear the science. There's four holy holidays and four near holidays. They're already there. You got to chart it. That's not creating a holiday. You're just charting a natural phenomenon. You're charting 
the highest point of the, of the sun and the lowest destination of the sun. You're just charting it. You're not, that's not creating the holiday. I'm just getting to the math of it. Yes. If I'm not clear, please raise your hand for clarity. Don't say I wish I asked the pastor. Don't, don't wait to after the class to ask me any questions. I'm right here. Ask me now. Um, I was just wondering if you could chart the seasons on a diagram that you have on the board. Yes, so that okay. we could, we could actually see it unfold in our. Yes, I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to. Yeah. I'm going to. What I'm going to do is show. The, by picture, the sun, the position of the sun, showing the sun. I'm going to explain all that. I'm going to show that. Okay. What I was trying to, what I, what I wanted to do, start off with, is with, with this mega emblematic em image of the megalithic stone, stone on um, sun So I'm going to do that now. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. All right. Yeah. You need more. You need images. So I'll put the images on the board and all right. All right, so that's Your 
right? Now, there are two points where the sun crosses the equator. The two points where the sun crosses the equator are the equinoctial points. Autumn equinox and the vernal equinox. All right, here's the, here is. Right, let me explain, let me show you some of this. So this appears to be, it's not exactly 12 hours a day, 12 hours, it's 
something you have it's close. Maybe 13 hours of daylight, all right, and 11 hours and some change of night. All right, so it's, it's close to 12, 12. All right, that's called the equinox. And that can be measured, determined. And you have the same thing that's approaching. All right, so what occurred on the June 21st is that the sun was at its highest point of elevation. And then it stood still for Perry stood still for three days, and then what? Now the days get shorter and shorter. Every every seven days, the days get shorter by ten minutes, ten plus minutes, getting shorter. Every seven days, it's shorter and shorter and shorter until you now on September twenty third, which is approaching us. There's what. Apparently 12 hours a day, 12 hours a night. All right, that's called the autumnal equinox. That's why it's called the autumnal equinox. Because of the time, the time, it's not exactly 12 and 12, but it's close. All right? Now, the days continue to get shorter. So every seven days, the days get shorter by 10 minutes. Shorter by 10 minutes. Every seven days. Now we're approaching March, December 21st. Jesus went down the cross. Jesus dies on the cross. The days getting shorter now. All right? So the shortest, so let me, let me explain, let me show you this graphically. I got graphics. Show graphics. So, show graphics.
or back to Egyptian, which is in the head copper top, all right, or Mechaneta. You have the name Joseph, Yusef,
Young know, news, it's a new new cycle. What, what, what's going to occur? The days what now get longer, incrementally get longer. Every seven days, ten minute increase, ten minute increase. Opportunity, but ten minute increase. So what? Three months later, you have what? Thirteen hours a day, and about eleven hours a night. That's called the vernal equinox. Remember now you have remember now the days are getting days have been getting shorter since December 24th. Since, I'm sorry, since June 24th, the days have been incrementally getting shorter. Days have not got longer. Days don't get longer. Once it hits June 21st, days do not get longer. That's the point where now the days will get shorter. And that will continue until December 23rd or 4th. Those are, those are the two major points. The source video points are the two major points because it marks when the days begin to get longer and the days begin to get shorter. And we charted this a thousand years ago, hence the Coptic cross. That's what that means. So I'm explaining to you what it is. So you can what? Remove the idle hypnosis and contributing things to your opinions. Yes. Islam. Islam. Also, the creation, the charting, set the tone for when the proper time to, as they say, the reaping and sowing period for farmers, yes. because we are yes. agricultural people. So in knowing the cycle of the sun and the cycle of the moon and the proper spatial places to plant, that tells that would tell our ancestors and, and um, as well as farmers today, when is the proper time to plant this, when is the proper time not to plant this, when is the proper time you must reap what you sow, you know, pull up those, pull your fruit or vegetables that you placed in because it deals with the fertility of the planetary life cycles as well. Excellent. So we're looking at the harvest um, on June 20th on uh, Lincoln. Lincoln was a president to a presidential proclamation. The harvest was celebrated in October. That's the Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is October. That's the harvest. Lincoln shifted that to November, the third Thursday of November. Why? Why the third Thursday? Why not the first Thursday of November? So when I start hearing, when I start looking at dates, I ask my question back ask myself, why this date? And then I start doing my research. I ask the question. Why the third Thursday of November? And then I start looking at the astronomy of what occurs during that time period. And it took me a couple of years to find out. That's what occurs. And during that time period, the third week of November, that's the onset of the rising of the rising spells. The three kings. The Ryan's belt are, are three pole stars. They're emblematic of the three kings. The three points. So you have on December 24th, 4th, Orion and Sirius aligns with the sun. The three kings are following the star of Bethlehem. Three kings are following the star of Bethlehem to find baby Jesus. Here we go. On December 24th, Orion and the sun of Lot, Orion and Sirius aligned with the sun. The astronomy will help you, will comprehend, you have to comprehend 
huge stones. Without the astronomy, it's going to be doing like this. You are the idol, you know, hypnosis, idol hypnosis. You're throwing your Christmas tree away like that, dude. Yes. Which is your axis munda. Your Christmas tree, your axis munda, the world's axis. So that is symbolic of the, of the axis of the earth. That's universal, using a Christmas tree. So you have Yuletide, the Yuletide where a law burns on December 24th, all night long. I don't have, don't, some people will have law or they'll have those you know, flames burning all night long. Ushering in a new year. Why? Why December 21st a new year? It's only 25th. Isn't that the birth? Jesus rose. There you go. Jesus rose for the day. That's the what? Once again, let's go back. Let's go back. June 21st, the sun is at its highest point of elevation. August for three days. 24th, now the days will get shorter. Every seven days, shorter by 10 minutes plus. Shorter, shorter, all right? And that, December 21st, the equinox, equal day equinox on September 23rd, it will continue to get shorter. Days continue to get shorter, incremental. Now you have the sun, the shortest day of the year, December 21st. Harvest for three days. Now the point the days are getting longer. That's why. So right now you start a new cycle. Jesus rose again. Jesus is down born. It's a start of the cycle. We charted that. So the the sunstone circles, stone hands and all the sunstone make up this circles throughout the world. And pillars. Chart that. The Europeans did not accept the count because you need this knowledge and this charting has to be done first. That's why I can prove that they you know that there's no such thing as the Gregorian calendar or the Julian calendar. The Europeans did not establish a calendar. People were saying that, I'm not aware of this. Some are and they're lying, and others don't know. I hear that Julian calendar crap. So when I hear that Julian calendar crap, that that Gregory calendar crap, that's, that's what it is. They took pre-existing calendars and thinking and taking the calendar. They also blended. They put together two calendars: the solar calendar and the Lunar calendar, thereby creating a lunar solar calendar. But you need a system, a complex system of intercalation. That's when you add a day, a week, or a month to a calendar to when you take them two different calendars. The lunar calendar is 354 days. All right. The solar calendar 365, one quarter day, 11 day difference. There's 11 day difference. So you bring two different calendars together, you got to use a system about intercalation to make the, the adjustments and calculations. The Sabbath relates to the moon. Why? It means seven. How many days are there in a week? How many days are there in a week? Y'all should have asked me, Abdullah, what calendar are you talking about? <laughs> so it's seven, 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 seven days. You don't even know what calendar I'm talking about. In the lunar calendar, seven. Then, mm. seven days a week, seven days a week in a lunar calendar. That's it like that. Say seven days a week is incorrect. It's incorrect. You cannot use that. It's not universal. 
That is not universal. To say that there's seven days in a week is not universal. Seven days a week in a lunar calendar. Charlie, y'all, here we go. I'm going to try. Let's use math, y'all. Everything I say will be verified. Everything I say tonight will be verified in physiology, etymology, and mathematics and astronomy. Do it yourself. Do not, don't, I want you to do it yourself. Right, here we go. Count. Full moon. You have the first full new moon. Let's count. How many days between the new moon, all right, and first full moon? Full moon. I got these right. First quarter. I'll put it at the top. First quarter. In the seven, seven, seven. <laughs> there you go. Seven, All right. Seven. New moon. You can count it yourself. I've been doing this for years, y'all. Plus, just count it. You want to see what? From when you can't see it, that's why it's thought. Can't be seen. The seven days. Right. You see this, right? Seven days later, it's going to be what? This. Yeah. Seven days, you just count yourself. You got to count yourself. That's four moon. Seven days later, you're going to see this. Last quarter. And it's going to go back to the new moon. Seven days from here, the last quarter, two back to the new moon is what? Seven days. That's your 28 days. That's your circle seven. You count it yourself. Count it yourself. The quote unquote Egyptians use what? A 10 day week of three weeks. 10 day week. And the focus was you have the, 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 the Angle flood, we had the harvest, all right, we had the planting. So we had to use the focus on the on three seasons. Because it's tied to serious, the dog star. That's all saying seven days in a week. The paper count that we talk about. Because that's not arbitrary to say, because then I would ask, why? Seven days. It's not arbitrary. It's not. What I'm saying is, it's already determined. You all you're doing is charting. You're not making this up. You're just calculating. You're charting. You're counting. You what? You're pointing for the circle. Here we go. Point for the circle. All right. There's your point. There's your your your, your pole. There's your rope. Charting. You're looking at the shadow cast on the rope, or you use yourself. Use yourself. Sit out there all day. Shadow cast off. You're charting. No. So you're not making up a holiday. No man on this planet has ever made up a holiday. Holiday? You make a holiday? We don't know what a holiday is. What constitutes a holiday? So we say, when's the next holiday, y'all? When's the next holiday? What's, what's that? When's the next holiday? There you go. I thought some of y'all gonna say Monday, right? <laughs> y'all gonna say, you gonna say Monday? Monday? Nah, Monday is the next holiday, fam. Not after I brought this down, Monday is not the next holiday. I know what they say. I know what millions of people say. But why do millions of people, why do millions of people both say Monday is a holiday? Why do millions of people say that? And guess what? After Monday, ask a question. 
after Monday, ask them all, ask your coworker, after Monday, you go back to work on Tuesday, ask your coworker, when's the next holiday? What are you gonna answer? Some will say Halloween, some will say Thanksgiving. They gonna bypass what? The holiday. September 23rd. No one will say September 23rd at your job. And that's the next holiday. See how we can do? Yes. Yeah, 20, yeah, 23rd, 23rd. Well, some will point it at the 21st, others will point it at the 20th, I've seen both. So you can start there and go across the nature, you got to have that job. But, if, but if, you, if you calculate it though, Dr. G, you, because I said, you look at the days, you know that the days are permitted to get shorter, and you'll have the equinox, it's just not gonna be 12 hours a day, 12 hours a night. It's gonna be, you know, it'll be 12 hours and 50 minutes of day, you know, 11 hours and 10 minutes of night. And you know, sometimes it'll be, you know, 13, uh, 13 hours a day, and you have 11 hours a night, all right? For the equinox, that's both for the summer and winter. All right? So the, the key is the math. Keep the math in mind. The math. You don't don't lose sight of the math. Once you lose sight of the math, you're going to be lost. If the math is, if you're not using your math and the astronomy, you you're, you're going to be lost. So the concept of like the people being down on their knees praying. For the so-called New Year on the thirty-first, of like ten to twelve days, ten to eleven, what well, nine to eleven days or so off. It's always after the fact. Like you know, you always want to believe for a new something. Right. You have people saying, "Oh, we're gonna have watch night service." Right, right, right. I always, I in the last several years have been saying, you know, start around the twenty-first and make your petitions and so forth for that new year, 21st and 23rd. That's good. As opposed to after the fact. That's true. The That's 31st true. is right. It's history. You're absolutely right, you're absolutely right. That's because you're talking about the build up of energy. Right. Because you're looking, you know, now the days is begin to get, you're looking at a shift and a, a beginning of a new cycle. The ending of one cycle and the beginning of a new cycle. That's where the birth of Jesus comes in. It's so the celebration of the ending of one cycle, all right, in the beginning of the, at the birth of the sun now. But now you're right. That's the point where days begin to get longer. Those so, are the, that's one of the sustenial points. So we can say there was a deliberate attempt to keep certain people off the mark as to where their higher energy and and where they where they can do their most good and um, energetically, it's if you keep giving them these fictitious... Yeah, like December 26th. The 6th, 26th as opposed to 25th? Yeah. No, no, like, the December 26th, you develop, somebody develops yes. on the, somebody develops on the December 26th. Yeah. He's seven. Oh, those seven yeah. days. Yeah, you know, yeah, somebody did Those, days. those, I know what you're talking about. Yes, the amount of pain. Yeah, so, those things are being given as a, um, Distraction, or if you will, it's a way. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's he, it, he it moved it. us away from our culture. Hey, I'm saying once again, no man on or no woman on this planet developing holiday. We chart it, not develop. That's not developing. Right. It all is already there. I mean, how you want to be able to develop that? You didn't develop that, you charted that. It's not developing, it's charting. You're using the knowledge of math and it's starting to chart the sustenial points and equinoctial points. It's not the, you, that's what it is. So that knowledge needs to be taught to our people. So we get on this idol worshiping. 
bring this idol worship, idol hypnosis, to come to idol hypnosis. Why are women idol hypnosis? Because they remove the math and science. That's it. You got to, how do you, how do you get people out of that? You got to remove the math and science. How do you get that to the, the Christian and Islamic and some of the other religion, dogmatic religious masses? Um, thank you for that. I can answer that. <laughs> I'm standing here tonight. How many views you got? I'm going to be the plan. All right, let me, okay, I ain't done. What's, what's, what's going to come out next? What book is going to come out next? All right, let me explain this book. Let me explain why this book coming out next. Why is this book book coming out next as opposed to Morse Basic Part 2? I'll go to Morse Basic Part 2. I'll go to Morse Basic. Once I, once I finished the American United States Citizen book, I started getting and got back into Morse Basic Part 2. This was in July of last year. July of last year. One of my Masonic connections, Don North Carolina, said to me, and I sent them this book cover. I sent them this book cover, and he posted on a Masonic Facebook page. European, both Europeans and brothers, Japan, Germany, France, and other, other uh, countries, they saw this. They were waiting, they, were, they had posted on his Facebook page when this coming out, they were all excited. So he he called me and suggested that this book should come out next. I thought about it for a whole week. So you know what he right. So I put the halt on motivation part two. Just stop working on it. All right, and I was almost done with something. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna get, get on this, finish this up. All right, so this will be out in about five weeks. This, a lot of Mason needs, a lot of Mason will gravitate to this. Worldwide. Worldwide. I go into, I go into the astronomy. I go, I have references. I mean, I'm, I was looking at chapter three the other day. I'm like, wow, man, this is a, a lot of references I have in this book, in this chapter. One chapter. So, that's, how I'm going to do it. You know something? See, they don't. See, they don't see this. This is what gravity is to them. The imagery. The imagery of gravity. No gravity to the image. Now, why the Masonic connection and Dorm, he said to me, he said, I never heard anyone break down I think what they call the royal arc symbol. The royal arc symbol. Oh, right here, all right. I keep thinking old school. Old school right? The royal arc symbol, like the way you did. And he's been a royal arc racist for 20 years. I'm talking about dudes, paying members, going to the meeting. I'm talking about active. We're talking about that brother who's been active for 20 years. And I broke this down, he was amazed. Can you break it Tau, 
19 plus 19 plus 19 is 57. Once I found out, when I was um, one of my former co-workers, European male, math teacher, I was in the library. This is when I was working on the uh, website. And they'll give, give me information to Josh, sent by his cousin, sent by his cousin. The, uh, and my website, and I was at the com uh, computer. I was printing out. I had to print out a, a, a website, a, a, um, an article, and it had um, a picture of European using the the cross as a measurement instrument, right? And he looked at it. He said, "Oh, remember he's a math teacher, so they, you know, math." So he he. Quickly recognized it. He said, Oh, I know what that is. And he said, uh, Do you know trigonometry? I said, No. Man, you need to know trigonometry, man. I'm telling you. You know, learn trigonometry, you better break this stuff down. I'm telling you. So come to my classroom. I'm going to give you a lesson on trigonometry. So a couple of days later, we were, we were done for finals. So a couple of days later, I went to his classroom and gave him a lesson on trigonometry. And he said to me, Man, um, it's about the radian. You know, you're saying that um, it's not about the circumference, um, it's about the radian. And I didn't know what he meant, and he, you know, is it bell had wrong. So I looked up radian, and it brought me to 57. And then I looked, saw that the number tau is the 19th letter of the Greek alphabet, and I started adding this up. I said, 50, I said, this is 57. So 57 in geometry, you learn to measure angles by the degrees. The degrees. In trigonometry, you measure angles by radian. They don't use. You don't, it's not, not trigonometry. That's geometry. All right, that's geometry. In trigonometry, you measure angles by radian. One radiant, one radiant equals 57 degrees. Or 57 degrees equals one radiant. I said, oh, that's trigonometry. <laughs> that's how I did. I mean, you know, I, I didn't know. I didn't know what it was. I mean, I did, you know, you know deduce him, you know, from analyzing it, you know, researching, make the connection. I didn't know. You know, I mean, I'm just like everybody else. Looking at I'm, I'm still missing. I, I see the 57, but I'm still missing the whole thing. All right. Spherical trigonometry is used in the regular board. So 57 degrees leads you to the one radiant leads you to this. Spherical trigonometry. Trigonometry or in plane trigonometry. So now this puts you in the ballpark that this is this is this is code for trigonometry. The 57 degrees. Alright? Once you and once you learn that 57 that in trigonometry they measure angles by radian, and you learn that one degree. One radian equals 57 degrees. That's how that's how I made the connection. That the the athlete talking about trigonometry. And then the circle, the circle lets me know that it's talking about what? Spherical trigonometry. As opposed to plane trigonometry. Questions? I mean, I can. What does that, what does it find though? What, since what they're using that, that spherical uh, trigonometry, right. what does it that know for them? All right, that was that part. All right, let me first, let's go. Those who combat, he saw this just as a mere symbol. 
This is the mere symbol that he had on his car, t-shirts, hats, as a mere symbol. He was not thinking spherical trigonometry, astronomy. So what it triggers is astronomy and spherical trigonometry. That is not a mere symbol. The brothers are involved in idle hypnosis. They have these things on their back of their car, on their t-shirts, on their hats, on their jackets. It's just mere, it's just to them, it's a symbol. To me, years ago, it was a symbol. 10 years ago, I was like the brothers. I saw this just as a mere symbol. Now, the, now when I see this, I'm thinking spherical trigonometry. Radiant. Measuring astronomy. You use spherical, the circle, the circle lets you know that it's not plain trigonometry. It's what? Spherical trigonometry. This lets you know that it's trigonometry. All right. Okay. It's on. Yes. What is it tied to in relationship to one's daily life? I think that's the question. Oh, yes. Calendar making. Thank you. Map making. One cannot make a calendar, nor a map, nor do astronomy, or navigate a ship without spiritual technology. That's what it's tied to. Calendar making, map making, which is cartography, navigation, ship, all right? Because you, you So it's more as we were seafaring people. Yes, we had to. In knowledge. order to navigate the seas. Yes. And to be able to have dominion over the seas, which we once did, this is the knowledge that we had to have. Yes. And it's encoded. And the knowledge that's needed again. Yes. So, Control though could be more like a control of say time and so forth, using that knowledge not where, where the masses don't know it. Since we need those things to map out things, would that be we use the symbol because we're evoking some sort of not just that the more is the seafaring, but it's evoking something. Most of their symbology has some process that they're evoking something with it. They're putting stuff on cards and on their, on their logos and things because it evokes something. Would that be the same thing? No. Okay. Let me, I'm just asking. I got you. Just like I did with the, the cross. Mm -hmm. I explained the Coptic cross. Mm -hmm. That it doesn't start with the symbol. Okay. It, doesn't, it doesn't start with that. The, it starts with the, the sunstone circles. Mm -hmm. All right, let me, let me go back. No. I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad you, so I'm just trying to go back to clarify. Let me do this again. That's called a point within a circle of all I But we'll have this on the cards too and so forth. Alright? This is emblematic of this. This is just a pole. I'm throwing a pole. I try to hold to it. Alright? That's what I'm doing. Alright? This is not the origin of it. This is not the origin. This is just a mirror image. This is not the origin. This is the origin. The math is the origin. Placing a, placing a pole and tying it to a rope and forming a circle and measuring it. Casting the sun will cast a shadow on the pole. That's the origin. That's also called a radius. Yes. So this is a, it's also called a nomen. Exactly. A nomen. This is a nomen. This is a nomen. This also functions as a nomen. So that, so this is what it really is. What they did was to suppress, or you won't say, or to preserve. And they'll say that they're suppressing. They create these, this image here. And got the brothers thinking that it's just a mere they don't give them the origin. They don't, they're not giving them what I'm giving you tonight. The brothers see this as a mirror image. They say, well, it's a Messiah symbol.
This is the origin. So it doesn't invoke, they're not, I got you, I got you. It's not invoking anything to them because they're not thinking mathematically. They're not thinking astronomy. They're thinking symbol, Masonic symbol. One of the brothers, the last class I taught at New York, I was talking about the two pillars of Boaz and Jack that walks the summer sauces and the winter sauces, the two pillars, Stonehenge, all right? He came up to me and said, that's the class. He says, uh, I took an oath not to reveal the, the names of the two pillars, but I didn't know the significance of it. So what was he, what was being invoked? He didn't know the significance of it. He took an oath to not to reveal the names of the two pillars. So what was being invoked? There's, there's no, what, there was nothing, because he was not invoking the science. No, what, there's nothing that was being invoked there. That's what I'm saying, it's stagnant. It's almost, it's, it's, it, it's, idle, it's idle hypnosis. I can't, what, I can't see that. <laughs> What's the, the um, 15. 15, thank you, thank you. So he was, so nothing was being invoked. He said he didn't know the significance of it. Question, Dr. Uh, Mayala. Yeah, that symbol is also, uh, what I was gonna say, it's what they call a monad. Uh, Some say that symbol is a symbol for what we would call the creator or God or the, 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 the dot in the center is called a monad. So how does that? The sun. The well, sun. The sun, wow. This is the sun. This is this is the sun. This is the symbol of the sun. Okay, but you've heard, heard it. It's called, it's a monad. I've never heard that. Yeah. I'm saying, I'm, not, I, I'm, not, I'm saying that this is, this is an ancient symbol of the sun as well. This is an ancient symbol of the sun, Ra. Because monad means one. There's one. So what does what does monad denote? One universal sun. No, no, no. All right. No. Only G, Dr. G. You were saying, all right. Because you were saying one universal creator, the sun. I, I, I'm trying to. I'm gonna ask the question again. What does the what does we have the word? All right. We have the word, word is bonad. Here we go. It's in a lot of symbols. We have thought, word, I do this a lot, y'all. I'm telling you, this helps me out a lot, y'all. Reference. Referring. Thought, word, referring. Have we, we got the word bonad. All right, good. So word is more monad. So you have thought, you have the word. What's the referring? What's the referring? What's the referring to this? So, all right, so on, let me, so you, you, you said, that's not what I'm saying. You said God or Peter. So now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the same thing with this. Here we go, now we got the word God. I didn't want to say that. No. This is a pattern of study. You can do it with any word. With any word. Any word. God. So I'm asking the question for God. Let's replace the word woman have with the word God. What does the word be? What's the referring? Um, oneness. Unity. One thing. So you're saying the referring for the word God is oneness, which is abstract. Creator. Oneness is abstract. Creator. Alright, once again, creator, we replace the word God. Do it. Do the hundred words. I'm gonna do the same thing with hundred words. Okay. All right. What is the referring for the, for the word creator? All right. Let me explain referring. Let me explain what I mean by that. All right. Here we go. The word is chair. The word is chair. Replace it with chair. 
What is the referring to the word chair for the word chair? It's marker. It's designator. Indicator. Reference point. What is the referring? Point to it. Point to it. Point to that. Just point to it. Point to that. That's the answer. Not what you said is not the answer. It's not what you said. The chair refers to that. You ain't got to say it. If you say it, it's wrong. If you say it, it's wrong. Let me explain. The word chair. The, the word chair doesn't denote the word chair. An object denotes the word chair. To answer the question, all you have to do is point to it. The object is right in front of you. I ask the question, what does the word chair refer to? You ain't got to open your mouth to answer the question. You don't have to open your mouth. If the object is in front of you, you don't have to open your mouth to answer the question. If you say chair, you're wrong. Because the word chair doesn't denote the word chair. The word chair denotes what? Question, you get it. Been doing this for years. Done it in front of thousands of people over years. You get it. I do this, this is what I do. Give me a million words, I do the same thing. I will do the same process with a million words. It's not the word, it's the process. Just change the word, same process. Change the word, same process. Change the word, same process. Then you move epistemology. So that's, that's what I do with any word. So I'm looking at something. Because they did it with by removing the reference point. It's now abstract. Such as the word glass. Yes. And that's called reification. Reification. Re get to fication. Black is a good example for reification. Reification is a comp complex call marks. Go back to call marks. Reification. Complex idea of making there you go. An event. Alright? And something that's immaterial. Abstract in this case, abstract and material. What? Material. I.e. black. I.e. black. It's abstract. And it has an appearance of being real. Or having what? Substance or material. That's called reidentification. Call marks. And that's what they use here. They use that in color law. I don't want to say law. Color law. Or to create, I mean, to create color law. That's, yes. I'm pouring a correction for me. Um, I'm looking and I'm, because I've heard this on a lot of other occasions and seen it use an example, but when I see that John B's in the 1500s may have introduced the symbol. Now I know that it's not an ancient symbol. It's something that's like from the 1500s. That's what, what's not an ancient symbol? The monad, the, calling it a monad. Remember I was calling it the monad? Right, right, right. But John Dees is credited with having created that as a, um, um, well, he was like some with, 
he's very well he was a the guy who was so he's so that's that's why I say he's taking a better method and, and putting his package on the plane. That's what he did. Yeah. We don't need to pay for that. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Nyala, what I was asking you, I was not s saying to you that this is not Mona, it's one. I don't even see that. I was asking you, what does it denote? Can you elaborate on what it denotes, what it refers to? You said, well, that's the Mona. Right. Because this, this is the dot within the circle. Right. But All right. So well, this is not the sun. This is not the sun. I say this is what? A symbol. The sun's going to be seen in the morning. Other time, yeah. Right. So what I'm saying is, I can relate this, this image to what I see in the morning. Right. So what I wanted you to do is relate the word, relate the word, there. Relate the word monad to some object. Yeah, I just, yeah. Test on it. I relate the word monad to some, I wanted you to ground it. Okay. I wanted you to ground it. Well, yeah. And you, on what you, and what you did was you gave me more abstract. Right. You, you substituted for the word God. Then you gave the word creator. Well, and you were just giving me a bit more, and, then, and I asked you to ground that. So what we did was you kept replacing. So I replaced the word monad with the word God that you gave me. And you still couldn't give me the reference. Then you said creator. And I replaced the word creator with the word, the word God was created. You still gave me, you couldn't give me the reference. Could I point it to me? Is that? No, I, what I was what I was doing was giving you and the listening audience epistemology, right. a process of thinking. Doesn't matter what word it is. Right. Just for, can I just say that yes. John, just so John D was she had, was, Oh yes. He was an English mathematician. He's born in 1527. Uh, an astronomer, astrologer, occult philosopher. And advisor to Queen Elizabeth, who much devoted much of his life study to the study of alchemy and divination and so forth. And he's a credit himself. So, yeah, I know that was who he was. Yeah. He studied us. Exactly. He studied, we don't need credit, he studied us. Yeah, I didn't give him no guess. That's something, yeah, we don't give him that. We already no, no, this is right. This is well, well, of course, of course. Mm -hmm. Your kids are writing that. All right, y'all. Um, well, stay tuned for my my upcoming book, my up and coming book, Masonic Masonic Conference Square: The Connection of Time Measuring and Timekeeping. Um, looking about five, six weeks. All right. Go ahead, Peter. Go ahead, Peter. Um, can we pre-order? Yes, you can pre-order. You can pre-order. I'm yes. Um, the the pre-order you go to moresandmasonry.org. Moors and Masonry.org. Title of the book, Moors and Masonry.org, the pre-order. Alright, I want to thank you, Dr. Nayala and Tamara, for bringing me on. And I trust that you had a better comprehension of happy or why Fridays the holy day. So we're not just having this, this idle hypnosis. That's my term, idle hypnosis. I need to call it that. Uh, I coined it already. Yeah. What is it called? Copyrighted, Copyrighted or uh, reg uh, registered. We yes. have one final question for you, Father. <clears throat> uh, what is the God particle? A loyal listener will say. The God particle? Yes. All right, well, God has been taken out of this epistemology. You're using English vernacular, an English vernacular to structure your question. What is the God particle? All right, now, what you do, you first look up, you look, you look at the word God, take it back to its origin, all right? Kula, look at it, evoke. So this word God in the Sanskrit, there was time to thought. So the particle would be an 
a higher act of thinking. Higher act of thinking. Or you can also tie it to with how the Europeans, because the Europeans did us, they did us right in preserving it in the Declaration of Independence. Nature's law, nature's God. They're not just using the outside of that. They placed it in the epistemology of time to nature. Laws of nature and nature's God. So you have to first look at the word in its proper epistemology. Then from there you structure your question. So the question is colorful. The God particle is it, 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 the God relates to thinking, a higher form of thinking. Clairvoyance, telepathy, lifting that, lifting this with my mind, lifting that with my mind. All right? So I'm placing the word God in its proper epistemology. Not God going to get you. God don't like ugly. God won't put you in damnation. Praise God. You know, the way people, they're using it, they're mis that's the wrong, that's the improper epistemology. But they were, that's been subjugated. They're using reunification. They're using reunification. To subjugate our mind. To take us from the concept of laws of nature and nature's God, from our ancient epistemology. Because that's our epistemology, nature. So then we're all balanced. We're all balanced. Just like we're all balanced, yes. We're all balanced. Time's up. All right. Thank you. Thank you again. Assalamu alaikum. Beta Beta. All right. Peace. Thank you for coming out and tuning in to House of Reawakening Minds as we strive to build this center for spiritual grounding, free thought, self discovery, and more science, an awakening experience for all ages. Um, thank you very much. Our upcoming event next Friday, um, we have National Grand Sheet, Taj Tariq Bay. Uh, we will post the topic on the Facebook board. Once again, we'd like to thank all the Muslims and have a good evening. Good night.